Today we're going to talk about coronary angiogram, the radial and the femoral axis. Um, some of you have asked me to add their non-UC email address so that they can get these lectures. Um, I will definitely make sure that I put that down in the list. Um, but the other way around would be that you can subscribe. Uh, so these are all on the YouTube. So you can subscribe to that channel so that you can keep getting it. So with any further delay, we're going to start with um, what are the basics, procedural things, and common um, mistakes that we might make during an angiogram and how to avoid that. And one thing that I always tell everybody and which I kind of did when I was a fellow was always stop whenever you are not sure about something, even if it is getting an access, don't be ashamed of saying I have a problem no matter how good we are we always will have this problem the problem will get magnified if if you you know you try to do things and you don't stop and you don't realize the problem um, but for the most part that we as an attendings are there for for you we help to help you and the mistakes that you might make we might have already made it and no matter how good the the attendings would be, they will still make these mistakes. So, so with with that, we're gonna start with the um, picture one here on the right side. This is just a diagram to show you the radial axis and how the anatomy looks like. Um, we do most of our cats through the radial axis, so I picked this one first. If you look at the radial near the radium radial. We usually do the radial artery. The reason for that, it is more superficial and you can press it against the bone. You can also do the ulnar, but you have to realize it's a deeper, it's a little bigger artery. And also it, there is more chances of hematoma, bleeding and all that. Obviously, if somebody's got a small radial artery, you don't want to go for the ulnar because you might jeopardize their circulation in the hand. The landmark for that is you can put two fingers from the uh, crease of the wrist or a two centimeter away from it. So you don't want to be near the crease and that is for obvious reason because once you put a TR band, if it is just at the crease and the patient is flexing, extending in the wrist, then you know there will be a problem that the TR band will get displaced or if the he artery is healing there, the, uh, the uh, with the clot formation then it might you know bleed again so try to be away from the crease of the radial of the of the arm in the wrist and you access the the radial artery i won't go into the detail but basically we know we we do that modified slit anchor technique we put the sheath in here and uh, we do angiogram bigger sheets are not necessary cause more clotting it is the longer sheet so if you have a longer sheet in the radial artery there is more chances of having clots and that is because you are denuding or injuring more length of the the radial artery so for the most part we thread the wire we go in or uh, you go into the brachial artery why we don't do the brachial artery that is for obvious reason because if you clot the brachial artery the whole arm down that will be ischemic. We do it sometimes, but in very, very, you know, selected cases. And once we do the procedure, we ask the vascular surgery usually to take out the sheet and do the, the open repair. Sometimes you can have what we call like a accessory radial artery. And this is the course of that radial artery. So if that happens, you know, they might have a separate radial artery. You can uh, re-stick that radial artery. But for the most part, this accessory radial artery is not big enough to accommodate bigger catheter, catheters. For example, 6 French or 7 French. You can get away with doing a diagnostic with a 5 French. We also have 4 French catheters. But you have to understand, okay, once you are done with a diagnostic, and if you have to intervene, then this accessory radial artery might not be, you know, 
uh, allow to accommodate that bigger catheters. You can also have what we call like a radial loop. And you have to understand the radial loop is not a contraindication. It's not a contraindication for not doing radial cath. We do it all the time. All you need to do is you, you can get a glide wire that will go across it. And once you get that, you put your catheter over it. And for the most part, this um, radial loop, when you push the catheter in, it's, it's going to go away and then the artery straightens up and then rest is defined because you already have a wire through it you don't have to worry about it yes if it is a very torturous loop and you can still see the the loop even after getting your catheter through that then that would be another indication to cross to the femoral or the left radial one mistake that we all do make, make is we just keep sticking to the right radial artery even if we have problem for most of the experts, they, they suggest that if you have any problem, it is okay to just switch to the femoral axis. So once you get your catheter or the wire across it, um, this is how the tiger catheter is going to sit. I have on picture 5, I have a diagram of the of the tiger catheter this is how it looks like but you have to imagine this is how this catheter is is sitting there it needs this space from the subclavian all the way to the cusp so if you have what we call a type a arch where everything is squished for example this arch goes like this there is less of this space here so as I said, you need that you need this space, this distance from the subclavian to the cusp so that you can freely manipulate this catheter. So in patients who are female, five foot two inches, five foot three inches, everything as I said is squished together. And even if you can get your catheter you might not have this enough space to manipulate the catheter. Another thing, the problem could be if you have uh, yeah, the what we call like um, anomalous take of the sub uh, subclavian. Um, it's going to come here. It goes behind the esophagus, and then again, you cannot make this back turn all the way. So that's. A, a relatively common or important contraindication not to do the through the radial axis. So in that situation what you can do is you can come from the left radial and you have to know that coming from the left radial is as if you are coming from the femoral axis. So you don't need the tiger catheter or the jackie catheter you can use the regular jr and jl catheter again as i said even if it is a shorter lady five foot two inch five foot three inch you can still come from the left radial because you will get that amount of a space for manipulating the catheter so with that we will go to the femoral axis in picture two we don't do femoral axis that much but since we don't do it that much we need to talk more about it because we might make more make more mistakes the landmark that you want to look at you can fluoro and you can look at the femoral head and the common thing you can do is you can see the inguinal ligament and you can palpate the artery of the inguinal ligament unless the patient is obese for the most part the common femoral artery is below the inguinal ligament and when you put your hemostat here basically what you are looking is probably at the middle or the lower portion of the femoral head because by the time you will stick the needle you might be in the middle of the femoral head and that is important to uh, cannulate the common and femoral artery at the middle of the femoral head so that you can press it if you stick the artery right here that is your 
inferior epigastric artery inferior epigastric artery right there anything above that is a high stick this is a retroperitoneal part of the femoral artery and more chances of rp bleed again you don't have a femoral head here or a bony structure that you can press the artery again against it so it is very important when you are doing a femoral access to remember these landmarks a little bit of the technique of that femoral access we'll come to the picture three so coming to the picture three this is the correct position for the needle you see the beveled edge of the needle which is inside the femoral artery and you will see the blood squirting out you have to have a brisk flow coming out of it if not then it's probably not a good stick and you might have to restick or you know um, reposition the needle common mistake that we can make in picture two if you see the needle so what's happening right now is the whole beveled edge of the needle is not inside the lumen of the artery this is only a small portion of the beveled edge which is in the artery and you might see a little bit of blood trickling out and you might think oh, okay i'm in the radial i'm in the femoral artery but the problem is if you look at this j wire here it is designed that when you straighten it up when it is comes out of the needle it takes this curve so if i have to thread this j wire in here it's gonna go and it's gonna just curve in here in the media or sub intimal and when you will push the the J wire, you just keep kind of dissecting the artery. That's one thing. Another thing is, for example, if you put the needle in and it went like this, you saw a brisk flow coming out, and by the time you were grabbing the wire, the needle has come back. So what's happening now in now is the be, the beveled edge is here. You already have punctured the artery through and through, so there will be blood going out from here. And you might see blood squirting out but since you have moved your needle again you put the j wire is just gonna loop here and cause dissection so this is something that you will learn with with as you do more and more of these so having talked about this we're just gonna go to the different shapes of the catheter looking at the picture four here you have the jetkin catheter right there and the Jetkin right catheter here. These are the shapes of this. The reason I put it down here is, see the, the Jetkin have only end holes. They don't have side holes and that is important. If you have a coronary artery and you cannulate that with a Jetkin catheter and it is kind of pushing the wall or the roof of the coronary artery and you inject hard you might call dissection so this is one thing that you have to always kind of look at if the catheter is sitting like this that's fine but if your catheter is pointing up towards the roof of the left main injecting forcefully can cause the dissection and that can be a disaster figure five this is the picture of the tiger catheter all i want you to consider this is it's got a side hole here so even if this is a coronary artery and the Jetkin catheter is sitting like that, you can clearly, carefully inject the contrast because some of the contrast will come out of the side hole so that it does not cause that much of pressure or shearing of the artery, the coronary artery. The one that we don't usually use is picture six, which is called uh, a Jackie catheter. It's the same as the tiger catheter. It's got a side hole, but the only difference is it's got this lip, a little bit of extension. Sometimes this might be enough to... So this, this extra of the length might help in sometimes, um, you know, engaging the coronary arteries. With this, we will stop. You all have a very nice weekend. Um, and... Feel free to ask me any questions, your feedbacks, or anything you want to change in these practical lecture series. Have a good day.